Let's see the reactions of aldehydes. And we're going to start with a reaction that I need to remind you of. And it's that the aldehyde can still be oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So you need a chromium-6 reagent. Whenever you use chromium, you have it in sulfuric acid. And the aldehyde will get oxidized all the way up to the carboxylic acid. We learned this reaction in the last semester, but I need to actually remind you of it because the next couple of chapters are going to be about carboxylic acids. Now in this, react, in this chapter, we also learn how to reduce the carbon-oxygen double bond, and we need a hydride reagent for that. We have lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is a very strong reducing agent. When you use it, you use it in an ether solvent, so THF would be a good solvent for it. And it's a two-step process. After you finish with the lithium aluminum hydride, you need to quench the reaction, and we use distilled water for that. And what we're going to do is that we're going to add hydrogen across the double bond. We discussed the mechanism of it during class, so go ahead and review it. But we go from an aldehyde to a primary alcohol. We could go ahead and use sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride will give you the exact same primary alcohol, but it's easier to work with sodium borohydride. You don't have to be so worried about the moisture in the air. Sodium borohydride, you can actually use it with methanol as solvent. It will reduce ketones and aldehydes and if you have an aldehyde, of course, you will go to the primary alcohol. The main difference between lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride is that sodium borohydride can only reduce ketones and aldehydes. Lithium aluminum hydride can reduce carboxylic acids, esters, cyanides, a lot more range when you use lithium aluminum hydride. Another reaction that's important is organometallics. And we have green yarns, we also have organolithiums. Let's use methyl magnesium bromide. It's a green yard. Whenever you see the magnesium salt, the correct name for it is a green yard. And the carbon is a, a good nucleophile, so it will attack the carbonyl and it will form the alcohol. Let me just do it. This is the intermediate, the tetrahedral intermediate. We just added a methyl to it. And there's still a hydrogen there. And that would be the first step of the reaction. The tetrahedral intermediate doesn't have any good leaving groups. Carbons are not good leaving groups. And the, the hydrogen that it's there is not a good leaving group either. So when you quench the reaction, the hydrogen will pick up a proton from the water and that's how you end up with a secondary alcohol when you attack an aldehyde with a green yard or an organolithium. Now I want to reserve this too for reactions with alcohols. Now I can attack twice with a molecule of alcohol. I'm going to add methanol to it, a large amount of ethanol, and I'm going to do it in the presence of an acid. And we're going to use HCl gas for this. And when you have a large excess of the methanol, we are going to add two molecules of the alcohol to the carbonyl. So I'm going to have what we call an acetal. So the acetal, you would have a carbon that has two oxygens and alkyl groups attached to it, two ether groups attached to it. This is a full acetal. The reaction is reversible, so I can go back to my aldehyde by just adding water and a little bit of acid, and we use it as a protection. So we protect carbonyls this way, but it's much better if we try to make a five-member ring out of the acetal, and that's where ethylene glycol comes in. So you use ethylene glycol, and instead of using HCl gas, we could also use toxic acid, 
or paratolenosulfonic acid. It's an organic acid. And the good thing about this reaction is that we're forming a five-member ring. And the five-member ring, again, it's an acetal as well, but five-member ring formations are favored. So this is the way that we protect carbonyls in lab. If you want to take the protecting group, then you add water, a little bit of acid, so you hydrolyze the acetal and get back your aldehyde.